You know, I, I think that there's a real legitimate question about whether, um, as a society, we rely too much on philanthropy. Um, I've lived and worked in Brazil, and I've uh, lived and worked in, in Europe, and um, traveled to many different parts of the world. And where philanthropy plays much less of a role or a much different role, and the state or government plays a much bigger role in terms of social welfare. Um, so there are different ways of really providing for what the Europeans would call social protection, what we would call uh, probably call social change or, or social investment. Um, we have a much more privatized model, which has a lot to do with the history of our country. Um, other parts of the world uh, rely more on a tax-based structure uh, and government resources and somewhat less on nonprofits and foundations. I mean, all this is changing. It's changing everywhere. But I think all of our societies all over the world, I mean, the real question is not how much philanthropy you have or how little. It's what kind of society you want to create and what are the best kind of partnerships uh, to do that. So um, I think we may depend too much on philanthropy and not pay enough uh, attention to the role of, of other sectors. Um, in terms of the Foundation Center and, you know, the sort of making profit on capitalizing on the fear and complexity inherent in seeking funding, um, what the Foundation Center does basically is take this tremendously heterogeneous universe of 97,000 foundations or so, by the way, most of which don't have websites. Um, we've Some research we did, we surveyed 11,000 foundations and found that only 29% of them had websites. Um, we take We pull all their information off their tax returns, getting it electronically from them, spend an enormous amount of time cleaning up this data, adding to this data because it has lots of holes in it, lots of uh, blanks in it, uh, and turning it into something that somebody can search to try to find uh, resources for the organization. Um, we do charge for that information. If you want to use it in your office or at your home, you have to subscribe to databases or you have to buy a publication. But anyone can use it free at any of our own offices in five U.S. cities or any of the 450 locations across the country, something we call cooperating collections, and even some of these outside the U.S., um, in Latin America, Africa, and Asia. These are usually public libraries, sometimes community foundations, maybe community colleges that have a cooperating agreement with us where you can go to a physical location, sit down, and use our databases, all our archive training material, and have access to all of our publications for free. Um, we charge for the simple reason that it costs us money to uh, – to clean this data and to deal with it and to maintain the computer applications and the databases and pay the rent just like any nonprofit. And somebody asked earlier about um, sustainable business models. Our feeling is that for the kind of work we do, the most sustainable business model is to have a healthy mix of earned income and uh, foundation grants. Now, um, a, a bit more into this, um, this entrance uh, from Hammond Street Senior Centers. How might we simultaneously advocate for foundations to move away from the practice of providing seed funding for new projects and untested innovations and toward general operating support for ongoing programs with proven track records while addressing the bigger question of why we are jettisoning public and personal responsibility for allocating adequate resources to social needs in favor of letting charity decide what's worth funding? Yeah, again, and this is, uh, uh, this is a, a large, complex question. Um, it relates to some of the things I started out talking about, but the, the, sort of the, the first part of the question. Uh, and it's kind of interesting, too, because here we have one of your, um, one of your change makers uh, saying, that, uh, uh, saying that foundations are funding seed projects for new projects, whereas we had another questioner saying th that foundations don't provide money for new untested products. So it's kind of interesting. Just I think it's a good indicator just how heterogeneous this funding world is. There are all types of funders that fund all types of causes. Um, to get to the general operating support question, this is a, a really live debate going on in the sector. All of our research shows that demand for general operating support from nonprofits exceeds the supply of it from foundations. There's some more foundation, more nonprofits want general operating support than foundations who say they're willing to give it. 
Um, all of our data is searchable by type of support, so you can actually search everything, all, all the foundations and all the grants we have to see who's giving general operating support. Um, with the recession, uh, there are uh, a number of foundations that said that the best thing that we can do to help nonprofits is to give them general operating support in a time of need. Um, and they have really shifted their strategies around this, this theme. Um, a very good example of that, if you want to check it out, is the Weingart Foundation in Los Angeles um, that really has made general operating support uh, not just a type of funding but a major uh, pillar of, of their strategy. Um, the question again comes back to this larger, you know, how we create social good, social change, and the right mix between charity and government and uh, philanthropy and business. And, you know, these are the stuff that uh, political debates are made of and um, the different models of different parts of the world and different countries and different regions. Um, there's no right answer to these questions, but I think if we're all honest, no matter where we sit on the globe, we know we, we can and have to do a much better job of providing a decent standard of living for all of our, our citizens. Yeah, Brad, we've got just one more question for you. And, uh, okay. And that's from Entrepreneurship 101, Revelation of Action Finalists for Prison Entrepreneurship Education. And they ask, many philanthropic foundations are asking organizations to show quantitative proof of their social impact through third-party research. This is a challenge for nascent organizations who require funding to commission that kind of study. What is your advice to new nonprofits that are seeking funding but do not yet have those metrics that you were talking about earlier and that quantitative evidence of social impact? Yeah, yeah. This is, a, this is sort of a, the chicken and egg question. Um, if we're, we're starting out our work and we don't yet have the quantitative information, information how could we get it? And then the funder sort of telling you, well, we'll fund you once you have the quantitative information, and there's really no way to get out of this loop. Um, but we do a kind of program at the Foundation Center and our different offices and sometimes in these cooperating collections around the country I mentioned called Meet the Grantmaker, where we basically have people that work at foundations come in and talk with a moderator to nonprofits about how they make their decisions. You know, it's a it's a, a no pitch zone, so nobody can pitch their project, but it gives people a chance to sort of understand that these program officers that make these decisions are just people, and they're really wrestling with a lot of the same kind of questions. And this is the great kind of question that would get posed in a a conversation like that. And you know, again, the thing about relationships. I mean, if you have any relationship with anyone at a foundation, this is a great question to ask them. Um, because, you know, a lot of philanthropy is not just about the metrics. I think the metrics are used sometimes because people are, the thing I mentioned earlier, have less of a tolerance for risk and are trying to avoid failure. But a lot of philanthropy is really motivated by people's passion for a cause. And I don't know personally this organization, the Prison Entrepreneurship Education Program, but it's a great name. Um, I can imagine what they do, and I know you know a handful of donors that that work on prison issues. Um, my guess is it would be more than willing to sit down and have this conversation for what looks like really needed work. I mean, how do you when you're just starting out? You know, can you help us? Ask a foundation to help you to build that capacity. Um, I think sometimes people too often think that this is about writing a proposal, putting it in the mail, or, you know, sending it online, and then praying. Um, you'd be surprised sometimes to ask people, if you really ask people for what you really need instead of what you think they will fund. Um, every once in a while, they will, they will recognize you're being really straight with them, really honest with them, and this is the best way they can help you, and they'll support you. Brad Smith. Thank you very much again for taking the time to speak with us and the Changemakers uh, community and Green Mountain Coffee Revelation Action competition entrance. Well, congratulations for the, the, uh, for the program and the excellent work um, of all the Changemakers and a great set of questions.